Hi, I'm Ryan from WMCT TV. Today we're going to talk about building a mobile production kit from scratch. If that's something that's interesting to you, stay tuned. So, like I said earlier, I'm Ryan. I work for WMCT TV in Marlboro. We're a community television studio. And one problem that we were running into is that whenever we'd go on location to cover sports, to do interviews, to do anything out in the field, we had a lot of different pieces that we had to bring along with us with tons of cables, with tons of power strips, uh, every XLR and HDMI that you could imagine. So, I wanted to figure out a way to put it all into one case and condense it as much as possible so that we could just pick up one case and go. And here is our solution. I'm going to walk you through it today. To start off, we needed a case. And this is an old lighting case that we found up in our attic somewhere. The best comparison we could find online for a similar case is something used for guns. So you might want to look on Amazon and buy a gun case. Not sure if that might raise any red flags if you're going into a high school to cover any local sports, but that's an option for you uh, if you're looking for a case case. So I'm going to walk you through all the different elements we have in this box right now and they're basically all held together with a ton of zip ties. We got some really big zip ties too. This is all the Amazon special uh, big zip ties and we just drilled holes right through this case to secure everything in. We also have some insulation foam which we use to protect everything while it's moving around and also to once we settle things we take the insulation foam and move it around to build up different areas so that it makes it easier to access. The elements that we have in this case are an A10 Mini Pro, which is our switcher, switching between HDMI sources. And if you use an A10 Mini Pro or a similar switcher, you know that you need a monitor to see everything you're switching behind, between. So for our monitor, we have uh, just a basic monitor that requires power and requires uh, takes uh, an HDMI or a USB-C in. Um, we're using the HDMI in, of course. We have our MacBook. Why are we using a MacBook? Because one of the main programs that we use for streaming is a program called Ecamm. And Ecamm is great because it allows you to do some multi-cam things directly in the Ecamm program, but it is a Mac-only program. If you're not using Ecamm, maybe you're streaming using OBS or going right to YouTube, uh, you got to have room for your laptop in here, whether it's a MacBook like we have or a PC. We also have our audio board in here. Doesn't need much explanation, but this is a digital audio board. This is a Zoom PodTrack P8. And what I like about the Zoom PodTrack is that it doesn't require uh, anything else to convert it into a signal to bring it into Ecamm. It has a USB-C out, which goes directly into our uh, our computer here, and that's how we get our audio in for the program. Now, be careful when you're looking around for an audio board that you're gonna use for streaming. There are some other versions of the Zoom mixer, but when I brought them directly in via USB-C into the computer, I didn't have control of any of the volume faders. It was bringing everything in at whatever the gain was set at. What I like about the Zoom pod track for, for live streaming is that it does listen to these, these faders. So as I bring things up and down, you can control what is going into your, your streaming program. Uh, going back to the A10 Mini Pro, you can take this directly into your computer. It reads it as a giant capture card. So you, it, it has a USB-C out and a USB-C right into your computer, and it'll pop up right in your computer as if you were just plugging in a webcam or another capture card. So, like I said, we use a program called Ecamm, and one of the funky things about Ecamm it, uh, that maybe I'm sure they'll improve upon in the future is that when it records, it records at the same quality of whatever you're broadcasting out. So if you're sending something out in HD, great, it's gonna record it in HD. But if you're in a tricky situation environment where maybe the signal gets lost, it's gonna downgrade whatever you're sending out, maybe to 720, maybe you're gonna lose some frames. And unfortunately, whatever it is sending it out is what it's gonna record as your final product. So a workaround for that is to get an external monitor slash recorder such as the Ninja. So what we do here is we, we bought an external monitor slash recorder. This one is uh, the Ninja brand. 
which will record via HDMI the full quality of whatever you're sending out via Ecamm. Now my MacBook does not have an HDMI out. Well, that stinks. So what's the workaround here? You're gonna have to get yourself one of these little, um, I don't know, what do you call it? A dongle, perhaps. We'll find the right name for it. It's a USB-C adapter hub sort of interface. What it does is it takes a, a USB-C port out of your computer and you plug it in and then it gives you an HDMI out, which is what we're using into the Ninja. And it also gives you some regular USB ports because the MacBook itself only has USB-C and occasionally we need regular USB ports. Say we wanted to take another camera in so we can do uh, a multi-box setup and have multiple uh, boxes at once. Well, the ATEM will only let us switch between one source at a time, but you can add additional capture cards into this setup via this USB hub dongle mabob, and by adding some additional capture cards to them, such as a cam link capture card, you can bring in additional camera sources, and that way you can do a nice multi-box setup where you can have multiple images on screen at once. Other than that, we've got a nice power strip over here where everything plugs in. And when we're not using it, we just unplug the power, tuck it right in here, and fold the whole case down. This box came with this sort of cardboard protector setup, um, and we just hot glued uh, some more of these foam insulation panels to it, and they lay in really nicely on top of the whole thing. Uh, to protect it when we're moving things around. But in terms of the actual connections from the mixer to the computer, from the ATEM to the monitor, and from the ATEM to the MacBook, I don't unplug any of those. I'm only unplugging the power uh, when we're traveling. If we walk around the back over here, so now we're looking at the back side or the top of our unit. And this should be the top because when you put it on the table, you don't want a whole bunch of things underneath it that are gonna make it uneven and off balance. So we decided just once again, using these ties to attach a few little accoutrements to the back side. So what are these little bags for? These are for our SWITs. And a SWIT is a wireless video transmitter. So we don't, we're not limited to just having long HDMI runs to this box. We have these little bags to attach our, our three SWITs. So when we're doing a, a basketball game, we can have someone down on the sideline. We can have someone up in the stands. We can have multiple SWITs running at once. And these little bags are just great. Uh, the SWITs pop right inside. You can, yeah, you can't really see them, but you can just we keep the little antennas right in the back pocket and screw them in like that. When we're not done, they pop back in and we just use these little clips. These are lighting clips that you might use for a backdrop and they just secure everything and, and keep it all secure while we're on the road uh, so nothing's gonna fall out of these bags. On the sides of these, we cut a little slit here and, and coming out of the slit, we have the HDMI cable which is going either it's going through a little hole here, and that's either going into the ATEM or into a capture card and into the USB dongle and into the MacBook. And then we have another little uh, hole here where we have the power supply coming out. So the power in the back is going into a power strip, and of course the power strip on the inside is attached to the power strip on the back. Is that the, the most um, fire resistant technique? I'm not sure, but I just wanted to avoid as many different plugs as we could. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it in too much trouble here. And then we just plug the whole thing in, it powers up the whole box and we are off to go. So this was our way of using a lot of different technology that we already had access to, to build something that we could travel pretty easily. Other than that, the only other things that we're bringing with us are maybe some long HDMI cords, our cameras and tripods, some power for those and we are good to go. One other thing that I don't want to forget to mention is our Wi-Fi hotspot. And this is a little hack, so don't tell T-Mobile our little workaround over here, but this uh, mobile hotspot is not meant to be mobile at all. It does use cell phone signals, 5G, uh, to provide Wi-Fi for a business, um, but it is not a mobile hotspot but we use it as a mobile hotspot because we're not paying upfront 
for the hotspot device. This is this little baby is $50 a month as of January 2023. And it does seem to get the job done. We just plug it in wherever we go. And I've actually found that it, it does have ethernet ports out. When you take the ethernet port out of here and go into the USB-C dongle and into the MacBook, it tends to actually be a little bit slower than just using this Wi-Fi hotspot over internet, over Wi-Fi. So that's my little tip for you there. It might be different for you, and maybe if you're actually using something that was designed to be a Wi-Fi hotspot, um, it might look or act a little bit differently. But this just require, it does require power, unlike some Wi-Fi hotspots which have a very large and robust battery. This does not have that. And don't be confused if you pick up one of these T-Mobile uh, hotspots. It does show that it has battery, but what that battery is for is just for wandering around the space that you're in and seeing when the, the bars are the strongest and seeing, oh, that's the place I should actually plug it in and set it by this particular window or at this elevation. It's not gonna actually give you a Wi-Fi signal until you plug it in to a power source. So this gets, this is all we use for our remote games and broadcasts and it, and it gets the job done. Of course, it doesn't matter where you are, you're gonna run into trouble with finding um, cell, cell coverage and finding uh, that perfect connection. But for the places that we broadcast from the most, we do that. And for those that do give us that ethernet signal, that direct signal, for instance, when we're at the, at the Marlboro High School and we're going live for a basketball game, they do give us a direct uh, internet port via ethernet and that does plug directly into the dongle, which is just terrific. So that brings us to the end of my little rundown of our mobile production kit, our case right here. It saves us a lot of time because everything just lives in here. We're not taking things in and out. And we even use it in the studio sometimes when we do uh, some programs using Ecamm uh, if we have a remote guest. And one of the shows we do actually has a guest from the Netherlands. And I'm gonna be telling you a little bit in another segment about how we use Ecamm uh, in a studio setup uh, with multiple guests and some of the workarounds I found for that. When you're closing everything up, uh, I even have a little loop here just for our, our headphones. And you might be wondering, oh, why aren't your headphones plugged into the computer itself? And my headphones are plugged into my Ninja because that is where my program audio is with my, my final audio, uh, with all the mixing that we've done uh, in the mixer and in Ecamm's audio settings is all going into the Ninja. So we always listen to our audio directly through there. Coil this baby up. And then you're just gonna start unplugging things. Um, I've unplugged my XLR there and I can power down my Zoom audio. I can power off my computer and then I can power off my Ninja. And the rest of these things, the monitor, the ATEM doesn't have an on off switch. We can just unplug all of these and they can just nestle right behind here into this beautiful little cubby hole. Now this computer looks like it's built up a little bit, uh, but it's not all the time. We have these extra foam insulation panels uh, that we use for packing everything. And when we unpack, I just make a nice little pile here and I put them underneath the computer and it just builds it up really nicely into a, a little elevated platform, which makes it a little easier to see and, and navigate the keyboard. But when we're packing everything up, that goes down. Uh, we have some external things that are plugged in and I'm gonna unplug those. Uh, one of those was from an external camera. The other is from external audio, which we can get rid of that as well. And everything is in here. And then there's no real Martha Stewart method to making this beautiful and acceptable. Like I said earlier, we have this uh, piece of cardboard essentially that was a part of this kit, this old lighting kit, and we've just affixed uh, some more of these insulation panels right to it. Um, these can nestle in right in here. We did cut out a, a, little, a little area here for some of these cables and stuff to fit in nicely. And then we can just fold the whole thing down, lock it up, 
And then once you're un unplugged here, I take this plug that um, is giving power to the whole unit and I just plug it back into itself. That way it's not getting in the way and it makes it easier to travel. And once everything that we need is the way it is, the whole thing will travel really nicely. And off we go. But honestly, it's not that heavy and um, it saves us so much time in the long run from having to figure out how to connect each of these HDMI cables and XLR cables. It really is a huge time saver to allow us to go somewhere, pop open this whole thing and be ready to go in a matter of minutes. So if you are gonna make your own kit, please send it. I'd love to see what you've come up with. Um, there is no uh, guideline for making kits like this. And of course there are some sort of all-in-one production kits out there that have XLR inputs and can stream and do multiple things but this was making the most of a lot of different things that we already had on hand. So I'm really curious to see what you come up with. Please comment below.